everybody. Thank you for coming out to Art This, episode 14. John, how are you? I am fine, and I'm tickled to be once again a part of the show about the work that makes art work. That's Art This. What do we got going on this we time? we got a jam-packed show here very soon on this very stage. Local Moorhead band, Wicked Peace. Yes, let's hear it, Wicked yeah. Peace. Yeah. Yes, Wicked Peace. And we have segment producers for Art This assigned to us by the master of the universe, Tim Creekmore, right. who also directs this show. And Carrie Maynard and Tanner Blevins will be sharing their field production work with us this week. In fact, let's turn it over to Carrie right now and see what she has up her sleeve. Carrie. All right, Carrie. Thank you, John. Thank you, Steve. For my first piece, I did it over Cleaning Closets, a production produced in the Lucille Theater here in Breckenridge. And the after, it's a play about LGBT students or people and the people they come out to as well. But I sat down with a and with an actor and with an actress and kind of got more of an insight on their opinions about acting in theater. So I hope you enjoy. The production of Cleaning Closets is about coming out stories from the LGBT community um, from both sides of the closet, which means not just the coming out stories of the people who came out, but the people they came out to. So family members and friends also um, came and shared their stories and uh, we, we integrated all of the different stories into one narrative. It's not just acting, it's uh, theater in general that I like and the reason that I love theater is, well one of the big reasons is it only happens once the same way, it's very much a living art. You are never in the same place, in the same time, under the same exact conditions again. So um, it's something that you have to be there actively participating in and actively observing to be able to actually experience the full effect of it. I like acting because it sort of gives you an opportunity to experience something outside yourself. And it also can give you a chance to express yourself I've done a little bit of acting, I've, I've got a little bit of history with some work in pro wrestling, nothing too notable, but you know, that involves, that involves doing other characters, but you know, not uh, about half the work in that is just dressing up like the person, you know, when you're on stage, you know, especially in this production, which has no real costumes, you know, everybody dressed in a color, you know, coordinated, very basic outfit. No, no matter what, you know, we were always dressed the same, although we would play two, three, four, five different characters as the show went along. And, you know, even though we didn't change our costumes, uh, other than putting on a little hat or a scarf or a jacket sometimes, we would play three or four different characters. You know, so we really had to work hard at changing our voices, you know, changing our mannerisms, our, you know, our emotions. I recommend people going and seeing shows or trying to experience theater at least once. Um, as far as like auditioning for shows, um, it actually helps to build your confidence and stuff. Um, for example, I'm not a very good public speaker. I don't do well with things like that or I didn't used to do well with it, but through theater and it's kind of forcing yourself out of those comfort zones and um, putting something else forward and so it really helps to boost confidence and stuff in yourself. Once you try to do things in theater and not just with acting but there are also a lot of backstage elements that people don't realize go into theater. Um, for example lighting and sound and backstage you have assistants stage managers who are making sure that the actors are in their places and that something doesn't go wrong, that a prop doesn't break, things like that. And it's experiencing it that way and behind the scenes is a really eye-opening thing because it makes you, I think, appreciate so much more um, the final product after having seen it put together and how many people it actually takes to create something like that. I think if I have any future in acting, uh, it'll definitely be you know, typecast, it'll be that bearded biker in the bar, or, you know, maybe it'll be, you know, the the effeminate guy in the gay bar, who knows, you know, but I'm, I'm, I have a certain look and I'm not willing to cut my beard and my hair, so I'm always going to have to be dealing with, 
you know, my look and, and where I can fit in, you know, into the, you know, entertainment industry because of it. I, I do want to do a lot of work behind the camera as well, but now with, now with uh, after cleaning closets, I am considering doing a lot more acting than I had planned on, so we'll just see where that goes. Welcome back. I am here with John Tanner Blevins, and Tanner is holding a piece of folk art created for Art This this week by folk artist Joanne Butts. Tanner is going to perform here with his band Wicked Peace. But first, tell us a little bit about the feature you did this week and who made this wonderful piece of art. Well, uh, this is from Joanne Butts. I went into her home. She's an Elliott County folk artist. She does a lot of Appalachian heritage paintings and murals and stuff like this, little animals. Real cool stuff, and uh, I did a feature just on her folk art and her life, kind of, and we'll see it. Take a look. We grew up poor, and we made, uh, I learned to make uh, our own little whistles and bow and arrows that really worked. We didn't shoot nobody with them, but we shot trees and things like that. But I made my own toys as a kid growing up because we didn't have a lot of toys. And through the years, I've always loved folk art. Uh, I've made, um, pieces of furniture when I was young in my 20s which I still have <laughs> and uh, but mostly I just uh, I've made made things that I needed out of necessity because we didn't have a lot of money okay my name is Joanne Butts and uh, I've been making folk art since the year of 2000 uh, we moved back down to Kentucky in the year of 1999 and I was sick and tired of doing factory work and things like that and I kept yearning to come back to Kentucky so <clears throat> we had bought some property down here in about 2000 no 1995 I think it was so we moved down here and uh, got acquainted with Minnie Aggins which she was my cousin I'd never met her and she encouraged me to start whittling she said you got to start whittling and I wanted to make make money and stay home so that's when I made my first sheep. It sits sideways. <laughs> it leans sideways like that. And uh, I sold it to her. It took me three days to make it, and I sold it to her for $5. <laughs> well, ra I was raised on a farm, and mostly the things that I make is Appalachian animals that I saw growing up or bar, uh, animals that we had on the farm. And I loved to paint mules. I loved big old mules. We had a big old mule that we had. Her name was Kate. And I could cry uh, because we lost her. I mean, it was this part of the family. But I was raised with chickens. My chickens is my big thing. I, I'm called the rooster lady, probably, because I sell a lot of roosters. And, um, but mostly in hogs and stuff like that, we always had huge hogs we had to feed. Mostly just farm animals growing up. I get a lot of pleasure in making the roosters. And then I love to do my Rural Roots paintings too. It, I see the scenes come alive and it's just like uh, coming from the past. I think it's just how we was raised, Appalachian style. Yeah, I've got uh, two on the barn down towards the prison. Those are uh, ones about tobacco. Raising tobacco, and that's a big tobacco barn there that belongs to the Dickersons, I think, is who it belongs to. And then I've got one, uh, one up on Sandy doing a big footed horse, uh, putting up hay the old fashioned way. And then there's another big waterfall up there on uh, Babe Wilder's barn. And then I did an 80 foot long one for the nursing home uh, in their courtyard for the uh, lighthouse unit. I did uh, the one out on the bridge on the covered, or the big bridge overlooking the gorge. I did a three-sided one, spring, summer, fall, and winter scene. I mean, it just comes in my mind, I can be driving down the road, and all of a sudden, I'll be uh, creating a, a, a new animal, or how I'm gonna make it detailed, the work in it, and, and then I draw my own design out, and then I cut it out and shape it, and there's lots of work that goes into creating one. 
and then I paint and paint and paint on it till I get it just perfect. I could get a job now anywhere I wanted because of what I can do, my skill level, with my hands. But I learned to do things with my hands as a child. But anytime I would go get a job, the skill level I can do, I can do machinery, I can do all kinds of stuff. I've even made heads for uh, Toyota trucks, and I mean, I can go through all the levels, the skill levels of anything that you do. But I was, I was just suppressed. I mean, they didn't have a window to look out of, and I'm an I'm a outside Kentucky girl, and I needed to be in the, in the country. So, and that's helped me to be able to create my skills the painting and it was always in there and it's just so embedded that I could not release it and it was just getting me down. So I said, I'm going back to Kentucky where the grass is always green and the sky is always blue. Well, I think it's just like it's in our blood. I mean, uh, we was all kind of raised poor and we was learnt the skills to work with our hands to create something. And we all, so it's our real roots is mostly what people carve and stuff in this area. So that's what I depict is the old timey way. And I think if a lot of people would go back to that kind of life, it would, they would be a lot better off. I think even though that was, you know, people would not have their, all their machinery and the intellect, you know, the stuff that they've got. I think you just get back to basics. It's a lot better. It's a lot better life. Hi, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, they're wicked, they're peaceful. We will ask them later how the origins of that name came to be, but without any further ado, Wicked Peace. Take it away. This is coconut rum, strip version. Take it away, Pat. One, two, three, four. My feet are planted in the sand, and you're beside me, hand in hand. I close my eyes, and this I see it's paradise, it's you and Ocean breeze and coconut rum That crippling view of happiness Left both of us numb Let's leave and find a better life In paradise it's you and I And she said it home to you happiness is just the point of view I'm asking if I leave will you come too cause I can't find my way alone to paradise let's run away me and you both before our point of views go up in smoke girl I'm not 
opposed I'm open to looking for heaven machine while telling me it's under my nose Oh, but I don't know It could be my bliss or a kiss from a rose And if you took my hand then it's two we could go find a Which bear was warmer in the sand between our toes And there I could love you until I love the water in the ocean froze First song there. Uh, we are here with Wicked Peace, Patrick Broomback, Amanda Blevins, and John Tanner Blevins. And what was the name of that first song there? That first song was named uh, Coconut Rum. Coconut Rum. And you said the clean version. The stripped version. Stripped version. It was it was already clean, so we didn't have okay. to clean it up. But we usually play drums and like full electric guitars and stuff. So that's why I said stripped version. Okay, stripped version. All right. Now tell me a little bit about Wicked Peace. Uh, the like name, the name, the name, yeah, yeah. Well, the, everything, the name. Well, how'd you get up? How'd you get the name? Scott Swagger. The uh, well, can we start from the beginning and then work to that? I guess. Well, we lived next to, we lived in Butler, next to each other, and we we're neighbors, me and Tanner and Chad. Uh, so we kind of just naturally heard each other playing guitar, and we jammed one day, and then we said this is gonna be a band, and then Scott, we needed a name. We had a page full of a notebook. And Scott just kept naming them off, and then he said Wicked Beast one time. And I like, felt all warm inside, so I felt like it was a good <laughs> choice. That's how you knew it was Yeah, I knew. Stick, I just right? felt it, so we stuck with it. So you two, brother, sister, mm -hmm. how's that? It's great. Awesome. A lot of uh, brother-sister duos out there making the music these days, so that's kind of cool. We're going to give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so who does the songwriting here? How do, how do you all decide who plays what instrument? And Mostly, I write most of the songs I sing. She writes... Most of the songs she sings, and I just do music every now and then. Usually, it's just we we stick to the same stuff. Usually, we'll play some. Sometimes I'll play some uke or Pat Will or something. But usually, we just do. We'll do the two guitars. Chad will do the bass, and Amanda will maybe play some guitar, some tambourine yeah. or something, and yeah, load it on the drums. A bit. So, where do you all uh, play music at around here? Where can people find your stuff at? We don't play too much around here. We uh, play back home where I'm from, Paintsville a lot, play up in Huntington sometimes, and we'll play a few open mics around here, but we got a website, wickedpeace.com, and we're about to put out a new EP, so we're pretty excited about that. Facebook. What's Facebook site? Just facebook.com forward slash wickedpeace, and then we got a few music videos that we made. Since we're in Convergent Media, we made, <laughs> took advantage of that, made a couple originals. I hope you took advantage yeah. of that. Well, you know, Wicked Peace is, a, is an interesting name, and it's good to have a college band on here. So, fantastic stuff. And you're going to play one more song for us here after the break. What's the second song going to be called? Uh, it's, it's called Left My Mark. Left My Mark. And you wrote this song? Yeah. All right. I'm sure there's a lot of great stories behind these songs, but we will talk about that at another time. But Well, thank you all for coming on. Thanks for having and us. And happy birthday to Patrick Broombeck. I think we just missed your birthday. Yep. So, yeah, thanks for coming on. 21. We'll be right back with more Wicked Peace.
Thank you, thank you. We're back here with segment producer Carrie Maynard. You did nice work on that first feature. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your second for today. Well, for my second piece, it's about Donna Lindley Jordan, an artist over at the Rowan County Arts Center just off campus. And she invited me into her studio, and I sat down and interviewed her about what she likes to do and the kind of art she does. So let's take a look. I just want to encourage everybody to let the artist in them, the creativity in them come out. And that's not an easy thing for people to do. So look for something that's freeing. I'm Donna Lemley Jordan, um, more fondly known around here as DJ. I'm um, an artist, and I have a studio here at the Art Center um, in, at the old courthouse. And this is where I make my magic. <laughs> I do this because I have to. It's just something that's in me that needs to come out. I truly believe that we're all born with art uh, talents and art abilities, and we get them squashed very young by having to stay color inside the lines and use make tree trunks brown and leaves green, and we aren't encouraged to be creative and to find our own way in, in the art world. And, but some of us fortunately managed to find a way to not be squashed by that. And I don't know whether our drive is just so much harder <laughs> than others. I'm not sure where it comes from, but I know there's something in, in me that makes me create. I can't remember a time when I wasn't creating something. When people ask me what kind of art I do, if it's not sculpture, I do it. And so I usually have s my fingers in pots in several different areas uh, at any one time. And I move in and out of where, I, where I'm focusing. Right now, I'm, I probably am doing more fiber art in terms of wall hanging type art. I'm working a little bit in some wearable art projects. Um, I've just gotten into painting ceramic tiles and I've been doing some teaching. and. Uh, of, of that technique. The big thing right now I'm working on, on is, is dolls. Um, I'm doing, it sort of came out of a, of a passion to make paper dolls, stretching that term in the broadest um, definition possible. My paper dolls are made out of feathers and, and cloth and, and Easter egg grass or Easter basket grass. And that moved me into doing some assemblage dolls which is sort of a three-dimensional collage. This is uh, my first uh, construction uh, assemblage doll, sorry. Um, I have a, a collection of antique boxes that I've, had, I've been collecting for 50 some years. And I used to have them hanging in my house. They were my spice boxes. Um, they, had, they had dioramas in them. I use them for all kinds of things, primarily in the kitchen. And I'm not doing that anymore, and I'm going, what am I gonna do with all my wonderful boxes? And suddenly I thought about my dolls. And so this is an old port 
box. And when I found this doll head with this little hat on it, I decided that she was an artist. It's really a hard question to answer where I see myself going with my art or what I'm gonna do because as I said, I, I don't really ever kind of know what's gonna motivate me. Um, and sometimes an, an exhibit comes along that I'm going, oh, that would be cool to enter. And so I start working on a piece that fits the theme or the requirements of the exhibit. I don't do that very often, but occasionally I have. Sometimes it's just something I see that someone else did that go, oh, whoa, that sparked something. And, and it could be a painting someone does that, that gives me an idea for a fiber art piece or um, a photograph, even some of my own photographs that I have uh, turned into watercolors. And so I never know what I'm gonna see that's going to say to me, oh, that would be so cool if I did this um, with that. So where I'm going, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, thank you. Oh, what a show, huh? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming to Art This thank 14. You. And thank you to Tanner and Carrie, our student producers, to Wicked Peace for coming in and playing. Fantastic. To John Flavel for photography and DJ Moda F2 and the whole fabulous crew. And uh, Stephen, you've got to talk a little bit about our next show. We do. Art This 15 coming up in April. It's going to be a big show. We don't want to tease it too much, but we're going to have possibly our biggest show to date. Yes. So please check out our presence online and uh, come to our next taping. I think I should keep April it April 15th. Tax day. That's right. Just can't forget Something to that celebrate. One. Yeah. All right. Should we get out of here? Let's do it. All right. You guys, do jam with us? Let's do it. All right. <laughs>